Good evening, everyone. This is going to be the pre-lab for our gravimetric analysis lab that we'll be performing in class tomorrow. In this lab, we'll be using a precipitation reaction to determine the identity of a compound. A large variety of analytical techniques and procedures, ranging from instrumental methods such as spectroscopy and chromatography to more classical processes such as qualitative and gravimetric analysis, have been created to accomplish that task. In this laboratory, the identification of a group 1 metal carbonate is determined gravimetrically using a double replacement precipitation reaction. In this experiment, an unknown group 1 metal carbonate with the formula of M2CO3 is analyzed to determine the identity of the group 1 metal, M. It will either be sodium, potassium, or lithium. A known amount of the soluble unknown carbonate is dissolved in water to dissociate the compound into its ion. M2CO3 as a solid will break down into 2M plus plus CO3 2 minus for its dissociation equation. When a soluble amount of the calcium chloride CaCl2 is added to this metal carbonate solution, a precipitate of calcium carbonate forms. Ca2 plus plus CO3 2 minus forms CaCO3. The overall reaction represents a double replacement reaction with a precipitate formed. And the precipitate calcium carbonate is then filtered, dried, and weighed. The moles of the calcium carbonate, CaCO3, are equal to the moles of the group 1 metal carbonate, M2CO3, added to the original solution. Dividing the mass of the unknown carbonate by the moles of the calcium carbonate yields the formula weight, and thus the identity of the group 1 metal carbonate. Okay, so now let's get into the actual lab procedures. So I know for many of you, this is going to be your first time doing a chemistry lab, as we had discussed in class today. So I'm going to kind of show you some of the different items that we're going to be using and how to use them. So the first thing we have is a Bunsen burner. So when you are using your Bunsen burner, I'm going to slide this over here so you can kind of see the valve over here. And so what we want to do right now, as you can hopefully see, the valve is perpendicular to the hose. So when we want to turn it on, we make the valve going perpendicular to the hose itself. And now from there, we want to take our lighter and our striker, and you just basically come across the top at kind of like a 45 degree angle. And hopefully the striker is working decently enough. There we go. So I now have my Bunsen burner lit. We also will have what we call a up a little bit this is a crucible so basically what we're going to do is we're heating objects in here this is a little metal crucible a lot of them are porcelain they break a, very easily so we're going to use a uh, metal crucible and this is a clay triangle and then i have the ring stand set up over here so again i have a ring attached to the ring stand uh, you're going to place the clay triangle onto the ring and then you're going to place the crucible onto the clay triangle. At this point, we're going to take this on the Bunsen burner. You can kind of see here with the flame a little bit, put it background on my shirt there. Uh, I have what we call a gentle flame at this point. Hopefully you can kind of see here the bottom part of the Bunsen burner. The valves are closed, so it's limiting the amount of oxygen that's present. We can open these up a little bit and you can see the flame you can hear it. You can see the little interior blue flame on it now, and that's a more intense heating. So we want to use a gentle flame for this. We're going to place this underneath the crucible, and we're going to let it heat up for just about 30 seconds. The purpose of this, we want to drive off any of the water, the lab groups from the period before you, if you're in a second or third uh, grouping. They may have washed out the crucibles or maybe some residual water left over. So we just want to take it for about 30 seconds or so, dry it off, and then we're going to let it cool off. So at this point, we're going to let it go ahead and cool. I'm going to pause the video here, let it cool off, um, and then we'll get into the weighing of the crucible and the other objects. Okay, so we've let it dry for just a couple of minutes. It is now... Uh, I would go ahead and like place your hand over the top without touching it just to see if you can feel some of the heat coming off. Once you get to the point where you can't really feel it, then maybe just take a moment and just kind of tap it to see if it is hot or not. And then from there, uh, like I said, always remove it with your crucible tongs. You can hold it 
Uh, just kind of cuff the bottom of it on the sides and you can lift it off. The tabletops are fire resistant, so heat resistant, so you can set it on the top of the table and you'll be all set. So I'm gonna come over here and move the computer around. We're now going to begin to learn how to use a balance. Uh, so again, we have some electronic balances here. This one goes to the hunter's place. Uh, we have other analytical balances that go to the thousands place, which you guys are gonna use. Uh, I'll show you more about that in class uh, when we get there. But we wanna go ahead on our balance and zero it out. So that way we have no mass. There's a little button on there for tearing or zeroing. And then I want to take the mass of the crucible. So write that down on your uh, data table. And then from there, we want to take our unknown carbonate, which again, I'm going to hold onto the label, but we have some right here. And you're going to scoop out two grams approximately for that. Now, what you can do for that is just simply add it directly to the crucible and um, once we've done that we're then going to take it and heat it back up ever so quickly and we want to make it so it has a constant mass so if you remember we talked about hydrates in class this carbonate is a hydrate and so we want to take it and um, drive off all of the water to make it the anhydrous compound so we're going to measure out again as close to two grams as possible. It's not a big deal if you are slightly over or slightly under. Just record that specific mass so when you do your calculations, it will be spot on. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay. So for me, I got approximately 2.25. So I'm just gonna write that down as my beginning mass. So at this point, Again, I'm going to go and place this back onto the clay triangle. And what we want to do is just gently heat that so that we can drive off the extra water. Uh, whenever you are holding the crucible on or having the crucible on the um, clay triangle, it's not an incredibly stable thing. So if you want to move the, uh, the solid particles around a little bit, uh, I would highly suggest holding on to the crucible again with the tongs, and then that way you can just kind of move around the, uh, the solid powder, and then uh, just make sure that you get all of your uh, compound off of the spatula that you are using so that you're not missing any of your product, because when you do that, as you can see, you can get a lot of it that comes on the end, and we don't want that to be part of our uh, missing from our mass. So I'm going to let that heat up for a couple of minutes, and then we will go back and check our mass. So if you let it heat up for just a few minutes before you start using your spatula, you should be able to get the powder to not stick to it. Um, I remembered I needed to put some goggles on for you guys, so I added that in. Um, but it's been about two or three minutes, so I'm going to let it go for just another minute or two. Um, you should be able to have it heat up for just about two to three minutes, and then we're going to take it off and let it cool down again. And again, we're gonna do this a couple times just to make sure that we get all of the uh, water driven off of the hydrate before we actually start the lab. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead, it's cooled off for a few minutes. We're gonna go ahead and remass it. And again, what we're hoping for is once we take the mass of it this time, we heat it up again for a couple of minutes for a second time. And then that way we're hoping that we've driven off all the water at this point. So the second time that we mass it, we're hoping we get the same exact mass that we did in the first one. If it isn't the same mass, then stick it on for another couple of minutes until you get to the point where the mass is consistent. Okay, so we're reheating it again for another couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the Bunsen burner uh, off there, just put it off to the side for just a minute, we're going to let it cool down once more, and then we're going to go ahead and get ready for the next part of the lab.
Okay, so when I remasked the uh, unknown carbonate, I came out with the same mass, 1.87 grams, that I did after the first trial. So I'm going to say that we can go ahead and shut the Bunsen burner off now, and we're going to move on to the next part of the lab. So the theory behind this, again, we're going to now take this, we're going to add it to a uh, beaker and then we're going to mix with it some 0.5 molar calcium chloride and the reaction is going to take place double replacement reaction i'm going to get calcium carbonate that will precipitate as a product from that reaction the other unknown metal chloride will be soluble in water and so we will then allow that precipitate to form and we're going to let it settle for about five minutes. So I will get the calcium chloride here for just a moment and um, we will add the powder into the um, beaker and we'll get ready to go. All right, so we're now going to take our powder out of our crucible and I now have a empty 250 milliliter beaker. Uh, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to just simply pour my powder in and I'm going to use my spatula to try to get as much of that powder out as possible. So now after this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a little bit of distilled water into the crucible here just to get rid of any of the extra powder. And it won't affect our results at all. So I have a little bit left in my graduated cylinder here. So I'm just going to take this, just kind of add it in, swirl it around a little bit. The carbonate will dissolve in the water, and I'm just going to kind of move the crucible along the edge there just to make sure that we get rid of all the powder. So any residual stuff on the bottom that will now be able to um, be accounted for in our reaction. So I'm going to take this here. I'm just going to kind of dissolve this up slightly as we go. Not really a big deal because we're going to add more water into it. I have the 0.2 molar. 0.2 molar uh, calcium chloride solution and I'm going to take this and I'm now going to mix that into our uh, reaction there and you can see that we have a precipitate definitely forming so I'm going to take and get as much of that out as I possibly can and then uh, I'm just going to mix it up here just a little bit uh, try to make sure that all the um, carbonate dissolves and reacts with the calcium chloride and then from there we're just going to let this sit so you can kind of see I definitely have a precipitate that forms you can see the little ring of it on the uh, edge of the beaker and we're going to let this sit for probably about five minutes and uh, just let it get all the precipitate to settle out to the bottom we should end up with a clearish liquid on the top and then we should see a layer of the precipitate sediment that will be down on the bottom. And then once we have that, we'll be ready to go for the last step um, for our lab here, which is going to be the vacuum filtration. And that way, instead of having to sit there and just add a little bit at a time through a old time gravity filter, we can use the water pressure as it's going to suck the um, liquid through the filter paper and we'll be able to collect our solid precipitate at the end. So I added 125 milliliters of the 0.2 molar calcium chloride uh, to the unknown carbonate. And at that point, uh, we're going to let it sit. We can run the reaction, collect the precipitate, and then take the mass of the precipitate once it has dried. So we will come back in just a couple minutes. All right, so for our last piece of the puzzle, we're going to incorporate vacuum filtration. So at this point, we have our uh, precipitate that is settling. I'm going to go ahead and show you the setup and how it basically runs. This is what we call a uh, Erlenmeyer flask with this, and it has an open end here that is coming off of the side. And this is a Buchner funnel. So inside of that Buchner funnel, we're going to place a piece of filter paper and we place the Buchner funnel on top and we create a nice little seal with it. We can push it down just a little bit. And then we have a vacuum filtration adapter that we have added on. I have a rubber hose. It has the adapter piece right here. We just slide this in and then we attach the hose to 
our Erlenmeyer flask. And now at this point, what we are going to do is we turn on the water. And as the water is rushing out, you'll get suction that is taking place with our Hutner funnel. And the water will cause the little bit. Here's getting too wet. So we're going to have the water coming through, and you should be able to feel some suction on the Butner funnel um, as it's as the air is being pulled through the filter. And so we'll be able to collect our uh, precipitate much more quickly than we would uh, if we use the gravity filtration. So I'm going to go ahead and dry off my computer here really quickly. And I'm going to move my computer back just a little bit to the other lab station so I can safely do it. So we are going here. I think you guys are still good. Uh, I now have my precipitate here. It's been probably about two or three minutes at this point, three, four minutes. So you can hopefully now see, again, getting a little bit more of a clearish liquid up top. And I can see the, filter, uh, the precipitate forming on the bottom. So with our precipitate, when we collect it, we have a piece of filter paper that fits nicely into our Butner funnel. So I'm going to grab one of those out, just one piece I forgot. So we use a piece of qualitative filter paper and, or quantitative, excuse me. And so we're just going to place a piece of this inside of the Butner funnel. And then I always recommend just um, putting some water through it. Uh, we want to take the mass of our empty uh, unused piece of filter paper first before we stick it in. So that way when we pull it out and we let it dry, we can then mass the uh, empty filter paper by itself um, away from the... Uh, precipitate that has uh, been set on it. So I've got my mass approximately 4 gram, 0.4 grams. So I'm going to place it inside of the Butner funnel, just layer it in here. And then I'm just going to add just a little bit of water to it. Not much, but just enough so that we can kind of seal the edges. And you can kind of see here maybe how slowly it's going to go through at this point. Uh, so you might see a couple little drips coming through, not much. I'm going to just go ahead and dump that out. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn the water back on. And so now I'm going to take and I'm going to pour in my precipitate and have it go through. You can see the water coming through clearly uh, in the Erlenmeyer flask. And we want to just kind of swirl it up a little bit as we're going. That way we can get all the solid to come off of the bottom. We don't want to pour it fast because we don't want it to overflow. We hopefully will have nothing but clear water at the bottom when we're all done. And that will tell us that we didn't lose any of our precipitate. So I'm just going to slowly pour it out and get that solid to form inside of the filter paper. You can still kind of see here, I have some on the side of the beaker, so I need to collect all that product. So we're going to use a wash bottle. These wash bottles have distilled water in them, so you can just grab one of the wash bottles and just kind of tilt your beaker over, and then you want to just kind of uh, add a little bit of water from the wash bottle, and you can get the remaining solid to come into your filter paper and hopefully you'll have a pretty clear beaker at the end and that's what we're shooting for uh, but we want to try to get as much of that solid powder off as possible because that could affect our results if not and so I'm going to just simply take that and get the rest of it into the filter paper. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit and just kind of dry off um, a little bit to get a lot of the residual water out. 
And then from there, the last step that we can do is once it's kind of dried out just a little bit, we have our oven in the back over here that you can see. And you're going to use a micro spatula. Take this off here. You can just grab a um, piece of paper, uh, paper towel, whatever, uh, watch glass, anything. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to remove your Buchner funnel and the top of the Buchner funnel comes off. And what we want to do is use the micro spatula, this object right here, and we want to be able to get the filter paper off out of here and onto a watch glass or paper towel, something like that, so that we can eventually go ahead and place it in the oven where we can dry it for 20 minutes or so. And then you guys can have your dried product. You can remass it and Therefore, you'd have the empty uh, filter paper that you masked before this versus the filter paper plus the precipitate, and you can determine your mass of the precipitate. From there, all you have to do is the stoichiometry calculations to determine which of the different compounds you had started with, either the sodium carbonate, the lithium carbonate, or the potassium carbonate. So that's the basic concept of the lab. Uh, once you have done that, clean up, pretty simple. Again, there's always a bucket of soapy water in the back, and you can just clean all your stuff, put it on the drying rack, and you will be all set and ready to go. So thank you for watching, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow.